Hey you guys, this is Tom from Tom's Interesting Talk and today we're going to break down the Acolyte series. You guys, I just don't quite understand all the disconnect with this series and why we've had so much negative press about this series. You got to give Disney at least a little bit of credit for trying to build a story around this world that we've never seen before. We've never seen a hundred years in the, the past. But it's how the story was told. This is the beginning of it. Somebody had to put a face to this time period. And that's what they did. They put a face to it. They built a story. You know, all lore has to start from the beginning. You know, some sort of basis of the content. You got to know what the hell is going on at the beginning so that you can build the story and the characters and all the, you know, all the intrigue and the over arc and the arc and the, you know, the protagonist and the antagonist. You got to have that story building. You got to have the basis of that to be able to enjoy the content going forward. We don't know what the Senate looks like. We don't know what the Jedi Order looks like at this point. You know, all we can do is assume from, you know, these older movies what it may have looked like a hundred years in the past. You know, we don't know, honestly, in some ways, how the Sith came about. We don't know how the Sith got into the Senate. Um, you know, this show can lead us into a young Palpatine. We're gonna to get to see Pelagus. I mean, one of the most badass Siths around if we support this show. You know, we're gonna to get to see a younger Yoda, 100 years. Remember, Yoda's 900 and some change old. So we're gonna to get to see a younger Yoda kind of in his prime in a way. You know, we're going to see, get to see a Yoda that we really haven't seen since the first three movies. Um, we're going to get to see a lot of things in this show. Um, they've added a little allure of the, of the mysticism to this as well, you know, that we're seeing in the Ahsoka series um, and that we're seeing a little bit of in the Boba Fett and Mandalorian series, you know, with, uh, with the witches of Dathomir. Um, this is new. This is new stuff for us. Anakin was supposedly created from the Force. And here we are. We're seeing two twins that were created from the Force. Two people, individuals, that have the exact identical DNA. Um, this is significant. This is a cool thing. We got to see, for the first time, in my opinion, and somebody actually bleed a kyber crystal. And, that, and this shows interpretation of a kyber crystal. If you're into Star Wars lore like I am... So let's just get into this a little bit. Because there was some really good stuff from this show. Chimere, as the evil Sith of this, or whatever you want to call him, um, you could call him a Wren, you could call him, I guess, a Sith Apprentice. I mean, there's a number of ways that you could look at this gentleman. Um, but you got to give him credit for the way he perceived the part and acted through the part. Um, he was masterful in, in, his, in the way he produced the dialogue. Dude, this guy's soul... He learned English to do this part. He played an amazing, an amazing role. And we're not giving him any of the credit that he deserves um, for basically being the fall guy of this show. Um, I, I accounted him when I first started first couple episodes. I felt like he was an Obi-Wan character of this time. And I know that's a lot and I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not going to go there. I mean, he's nothing like Obi-Wan, he's, he, but, and, you know, Ian McGregor made Obi-Wan what he was by his acting. And I think Soul 
made this role what it was by his acting and the way he saw this character, the feeling and emotion that he acted with. Um, probably the, you know, the toughest part of this show would be the sisters. But you gotta give them credit. Like that same actor that played the sisters, at times you did not know which one was which. And that's due to her good acting. She played two parts in this, and I swear to God, you could not tell which one was which at times. That's how good she, you know, she got to, you know, change her role, you know, get into this other character, go back and forth between the two. I think she did an amazing job. Um, probably, and then probably one of my favorite characters, you know, I, my, okay, here's my breakdown. My favorite character is Chimere, amazing actor. The way he portrayed this role, the way he did what he did, the evilness that he came up, came up with, you know, everything he said had a double meaning. I think they really did well with the Chimere character. Soul would be my second. You know, like I said, I had an Obi-Wan feel from him. I'm not gonna put that on him. I'm not gonna call him an Obi-Wan, but I felt like he made that role good. He added the passion to it. He added um, just the good stuff to that character that made it feel like that. Um, and then it'd be Vanestra, would be my next best character. You know, Vanestra wasn't necessarily as mainstream as some of the other characters, but I think she did a, a good part as well. Um, you know, it's, I don't know why we're getting such a bad rap. I don't know why this show is getting such a bad rap. It was made pretty well. You know, maybe it's not exactly how you wanted to hear the story. You know, maybe it wasn't perfect. But man, when you're trying to build this world, you know, that, that we don't understand, we don't know, you know, Coruscant, of course, we know Coruscant from the other movies, but this is a different Coruscant from a different time. You can see it's not built up, and you know, it's not built up as much. It's just not quite the same place that, that we know it from the movies. Um, and that's kind of your only familiarity with this time period you know we have the Jedi and we have Coruscant but everything else is pretty much new um god damn it you guys we got to see in this show an orange or the yellow lightsaber the purple lightsaber the green the blue the red we got to see a bled kyber crystal and how you make a cis and how you would make a Sith's lightsaber and how they're created. We've kind of seen it, but we really haven't seen it like this. I think they did a really good job, especially in that last episode of showing how that kyber crystal is made, the anguish and the feeling and where that emotion came from to help Osha make that kyber crystal and become who she was going to become in this show. I think they did a great job of even, you know, a longtime fan like I am to a person watching this show for the first time. You would get the understanding of how they showed that kyber crystal being bled. It almost looked like it was blood coming from her hand going into the crystal. That's not the case. We know this as fans. But they, it's the way they did it that really didn't matter if you were a, a new fan or an old fan. Um, you would understand what was going on. You would understand that, you know, that was the evil from her or the emotion from her to dig into the dark side and to make and bleed that kyber crystal from, you know, the death of her mom or souls killing her mother. And then, of course, him keeping that from her all those years and never explaining himself and talking to her and having a legit conversation, you know, and helping her through 
uh, the steps of mourning and this and that. Um, you guys, I'm a fan of this show. I'm a fan of the direction that this is going. Like, I would love to see them go back, say, a thousand years and get to see a reign of Timbris and get to see some of these other Sith. Wouldn't it be neat? Like, we know as fans and as, as we've watched Star Wars for years now, we know the Jedi aren't perfect. Um, just like modern day religion isn't perfect, you know, but to get to see, you know, how the Sith basically rise into the Senate and how they rise up again. And it's through the Jedi's failure and the deceit to the High Council and them being not, not being honest as the Jedi should be that leads to their downfall basically from Order 66 and Palpatine being able to um, basically infect Anakin and make him a Sith this show's great I'm a fan I'm a fan of the show I'm a fan of how they made it I'm a fan of the way they did it um, you know we haven't seen witch cults like this we haven't seen um, twins birthed by midichlorians before we haven't seen any of this stuff made by the force twins made by the force that are the same person there's so many new things in this in this show even down to Kymir's helmet we had not seen that it's really cool it's really really cool there were so many firsts in this. And then for us to get to see a hint of Plagueis in the shadows at the end of this, and then the potential of us seeing Yoda now involved in this plot and how it's going to move forward, pretty damn exciting as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I really do believe if you guys, as fans, give this a minute. Let's lent all this bad press settle down a little bit let's go back and rewatch the acolytes maybe in a couple weeks or a month down the road watch it all in a row all at one time and let the story you know fill you up remember this is movie magic you guys they're building a story they're building characters they're there's some things you just gotta take you know, we can't take everything as fact. We're watching a TV show. You know, we're watching, we're wanting to be entertained. Well, part of the entertainment of these shows, well, is how the characters are built. You know, we needed to see um, where May and Osha came from. We needed to see the witches and their allegiance to this dark one. Obviously it's not Chimere. I believe the witches were working for Plagueis and doing Plagueis' bidding at this point. And probably Plagueis' plan would be to take over one of these two. Whichever one was the strongest, most likely. So I, I'm a little I gotta admit, as a Star Wars fan, I don't quite understand where all the hate has come from for this show. I mean, I know in mainstream we've gotten a little sci fi out, so to speak, with the Marvel runs and the DC runs and, you know, all these different sci-fi things that are coming at us. Uh, and I get it. But as a longtime Star Wars fan, no, I wouldn't be okay with just nine movies. I wouldn't be okay with that. I want to see this continue. I was glad when Disney took this over so that we could get more and more content from this from this world, this lore, this Star Wars world. I mean, it's really cool. 
we've gotten so many good characters out of this and we've gotten so many neat conflicts um love and hate and all these neat neat things that have driven our imagination as human beings i'm still excited about this continuation of the star wars world and lore i am amazed and happy that we're turning all this legends, all these legends books into canon. And we're slowly turning it, turning the page on all this, all these really good written um, stories that we're now getting to see acted out live action. We have never seen a Kyber Crystal bled live action up to this point. And we got to witness that in the Acolytes. Dude, just that alone is, as a fan of lore, Star Wars lore, dude, I was stoked to see Plagueis just hiding in the shadows, you know, looking at his potential to, like his apprentice and his apprentice's apprentice and the power of what could be as the Sith start to rise a hundred years before they basically kill all the Jedi. It's not him. He's not doing it. But these are the beginning plans of that. At some point, Plagueis is going to be Palpatine's Sith Lord. And Palpatine is going to be apprentice to Plagueis. And we're going to get to see Palpatine kill Plagueis. Dude, the ramifications of this show and the storytelling and continuation of the storytelling leading in to the first three movies, man, there's a lot of time, a hundred years of information that we could get and more Star Wars lore. Introduction of these really cool Siths that we've only heard of until this, up to this point. This is exciting stuff, you guys. We need to get behind this show as Star Wars fans. Doesn't matter if you're old, doesn't matter if you're young. If you enjoy Star Wars content, this show needs to be got behind because it is the beginning of what could be a really good storytelling time. A hundred years of storytelling and a lot of content that we can produce or Disney can produce from this line right here, the Acolytes line. Um, we can get into the more, you know, maybe we can see more mysticism, you know, as we went away from just the Sith and just the Jedi into the Witches of Dathomir, you know, into this witch cult that we got to see um, from the Acolytes, you know, using the Force to make life that's pretty badass, you guys. Let's not, let's not take this lightly, what we just saw. I mean, I know it's a TV show. It's all fake. We know this. But if you're into this lore, you're into this world, and you like this sort of content, these are amazing things that's happened content-wise in this show. So, you know... Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to go on a little bit of rant. I need to back this show up. I feel like as a longtime Star Wars fan that wants to continue seeing more Star Wars content um, from this time period, I would love to see Star Wars. They could go, they could go all the way back to Timorous. We could see just some amazing Siths. You know, what about the Sith battles from 10,000 years ago? God, would you not like to see a whole shitload of Siths battling it out? for power I'm excited about that that excites me and this show right here and how we receive this show you know tells Disney if we want to move forward or if they want to move forward or not with some of these fringe pro uh, projects that could be going back in time to see some of these really really cool characters from our Legends books so hey you guys Please watch Acolytes, support Acolytes, go buy an Acolytes t-shirt, get online. Let's talk about the cool parts about this show rather than all the bad parts. You can pick any show apart.
I don't give a fuck which show you're watching. If you watch it enough times, you're going to see mistakes made. You're going to see choreographed things. You're going to see, you know, maybe a, an actor not quite nailing dialogue. You're going to see a lot of things. But just from a content basis and where we're at in the, in the Star Wars timeline, this is a really cool show that we should support as Star Wars fans. Star Wars fans. Like, I'm going to go out and buy me a Chimere shirt. It's happening. I'm going to do it. Next time you see me online talking about things, I'm going to have an Acolyte shirt on. Guaranteed. fucking tea. Because I think this is some cool content. I think it's well worth our time. And maybe Disney learns from this. You know, all this bad press that we put out about it. You know, maybe they get this next season better written. More like The Mandalorians has been written. Um, more like some of these other shows that, that have really hit well. I mean, I, you, a lot of people have talked about this show not having the content to it. Well, you guys, I loved the Obi-Wan show. I wanted to see Darth Vader and Obi-Wan go at it. But let's think about that show. How much actual content was to it? It didn't have a huge arc to it. it I mean, it fit into the timeline, but the storytelling was very small. A little tiny bit of storytelling for just a small time period in this overall story. Loved Obi-Wan. It was an amazing show, but it lacked content as well. It had great characters in Darth Vader and Obi-Wan. Great characters, great battle scenes, but the actual dialogue, come on, if we're honest, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. But we all wanted to see Obi-Wan and Darth Vader go at each other. So we watched it. We enjoyed it. You guys are killing me on this fucking Boba Fett. Boba Fett sucked. That show sucked. The last two episodes made that whole show. Boba Fett, that was a shit show. This is a much better show with better content, more original content than Boba Fett could have ever contained. The only reason Boba Fett even was remotely popular is because we got to see a young Luke in it. We got to see, you know, um, Mandalorian in it. We got to see Grogu in it. We got to see some of the, the heavy hitters, so to speak, in this new, you know, Star Wars world. And I get it. I'm excited for Mandalorian as well. I'm excited to see Grogu grow up, you know, a little bit and see what he's capable of. You know, I'm excited to see where the Mandalorian goes. I'm stoked absolutely stoked to see Thrawn, you know, battle with the powers that be. Um, so we're going to see some really cool stuff from that part. But I love what Star Wars is doing. You know, we're going forward still, but now we can go back. There were some amazing, amazing Siths before this time that as a Star Wars fan of lore, I think we should be paying attention to. I have watched Star Wars from the very beginning. Um, I'm 51 years old. You know, Star Wars came out in the late 70s. And I've been watching Star Wars since, God, the mid 80s at least. You know, because I was pretty young when the, uh, the original movie came out. And Star Wars wasn't coming on my radar until you know, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. So I've seen a long history of Star Wars um, movies and Star Wars TV shows. Um, at some point, we have to move forward past these characters that we grew up loving or that we love now. And we've got to move forward into this new Star Wars content. We love Jedis. We love Sith. You know, I'm becoming a fan of the Mandalorians. I'm becoming a fan of the Yoda and Grogu. I love those characters. These are all great characters. But I see great characters in this show too. One being Chimera. One being Soul. 
one being Vanestra. Nestra obviously has a lot more in her past and future that she's going to do. Um, is she going to make more bad decisions? What's she going to tell Yoda? Here we are. Now we are going to find out if we get a second season of this. We're going to find out some of what, what Yoda had learned and maybe not told the High Council some of his failings because, could be because maybe he wasn't upfront enough with the Je Jedi. Maybe he felt like they couldn't handle it. You know? You guys, let's support this show. I know this is just a fanboy ramblings from yours truly here at Tom's Interesting Talk. But I am feeling strongly about this and I want to get on the side of the Acolytes. Let's do this. I want to see some cool content. I want to see potentially, let's think about this. Dude, wouldn't you love to see Count Dooku trained by Yoda? Wouldn't you love to see Plagueis training Palpatine? Dude, we're talking about some great content, some great stories that could be told if we embrace this content, you know, this Acolyte series, because let's support this show, you guys. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you spending some time with me. Please like and subscribe. You know that's what makes it all go around.